Talon Habila. I'm a writer, a Nigerian writer. Um, I'm also a teacher. I teach in Virginia. My new book is called The Chibok Girls, and it's about the insurgency in northern Nigeria, the Islamist insurgency. So um, basically, it's about a trip I took from Meduguri to Chibok to see the, some of the girls that escaped and some of their parents. Um, the idea being to kind of um, highlight the individuals behind the story that we hear on the news that's become so banal because of repetition. They've just become statistics. So I wanted to give kind of human face to this story. But the girls are still missing, most of them. Um, so I thought it would be good to kind of keep talking about it, um, to kind of remind people that these are real people and they're still grieving and they're still hoping that their girls you know, will return. What do I hope <laughs> to achieve with the writing of this book? Um, you know, writing is, is something that you just, it's like shaking a tree. I'm just waiting to see what might drop from the tree, you know? Um, you don't know. People, different people react in different ways. Um, but I think the most important thing is to take the first step so that you create this um, platform for others to use, you know? Somebody might take it and do something different with it. Somebody might take it and, but even if I just inform people that this thing is out there and this will happen, you know, um, I think it's enough. Um, that in itself is enough to make people wary of such things, you know, to be more vigilant, to be more careful, you know, and to just to record it, you know, as a witness. Basically, as a writer, you are just a witness. So this is kind of witness literature that you just write about because you don't want to keep quiet. You want to say something because to keep quiet is um, almost as if you are colluding with it. So I think that's really the main thing, the, the impetus that drove me. I just couldn't keep quiet. And usually in society you want like, oh, there are the lower people, you know, they're really poor. And you have the middle class, then you have the rulers, the politicians, and those at the top, you know? So there's a kind of um, pyramidal kind of um, structure, the middle class being the buffer between the two, so that things trickle to the bottom from the top. But here, we don't have the middle class, they've been decimated by successive military regimes, and this is a systematic thing, because the middle class is the only class that's educated enough that has the possibility of rising and challenging the top. So when you decimate the middle class, the rich is there, ensconced in their whatever citadel. They don't have to even see the masses. So that's what I mean by this lack of egalitarianism. And a lot of people, you know, there's, there's so much you can do. There's so much you can push people. There's so far you can push them before they really begin to, to give. Something has to give. And some of the manifestations of this, I think, are the random violences that you find on the streets, um, the excessive fixation on religion as the answer to all our problems. Because we really don't believe that we're going to get justice on this earth. You know, we're, we're not going to um, get what we aspire to get because the system is unequal. So that, I think, is one of the main reasons. And that's really the, the definition for me of what the non-egalitarianism system you know, is. And it, it goes back a long way. Um, goes back to um, our monarchies, you know, our feudal systems, you know, that had people o almost worshiping the royal. Um, so what do you do with that? You know, how do you, how do you change it? I think that's the main question that people are kind of trying to grapple with. There are no easy answers to that, you know. Education is a good answer. Um, inclusiveness is a good answer. But basically, power is not something that is given. Power has to be taken. Power has to be wrested from the powerful. So I think that our system has to systematically begin to move towards that, to realize that we need to organize more. We need to talk about these things more, like the book I wrote, you know, just to show that there are these fissures, these cracks in our system. We need to be aware of it first before we even begin to do something about it. So we need more writers, more thinkers to talk about this thing. Um, culture is a construct. Culture is the world we make of it. Culture wasn't descended or, or thrown down from heaven. It's something that we created as a way to cope or to explain our cosmology, the things around us. That's how culture kind of emerges. And culture can be changed. Culture can be challenged. Um, so it's, it's, it's people um, in whose interest culture works that become the guardians of culture. What, 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 do, what does the person who is sleeping under the bridge care about culture? You know, He wants justice first <laughs> before culture. Um, nothing wrong with culture, but culture has to accommodate all. Culture is not just for some people. It has to be for all. And culture has to give people hope, has to give people fulfillment, has to kind of give people 
a kind of fuller life if it doesn't do that, if culture is only used um, to exploit others, then that's not a good culture. We need to grow other cultures. We need, to, we need to think about it. Why did I start the publishing company called Codite Books in partnership with Parisia Publishers in Lagos? Um, the idea behind it was to, to kind of promote alternative kind of writing. There's so much fixation, especially for university trained writers like me, you know, to write like Wole Shoyinka, that we have a kind of narrow conception of what literature is. Um, but people still buy detective books. We buy it from foreign writers. We buy sci-fi from foreign writers. But we don't encourage the writing of it. If we can spend our money on it, why can't we just teach people how to write it, you know? That really is the reason why I wanted to, to kind of try to break that, that mind frame that writing only means writing this capital L literature. It's a marketplace. Produce books. And I think if you can write about things that happen every day, just like in the newspapers. You take subject matters from the newspapers, a murder, use it and develop it so that people are actually aware, they know about these things, they can relate to it more. The final events I've done so far are two. Um, the first one was about Black Lives Matter in Africa, especially. Um, so we kind of talked about, you know, um, does the concept of Black Lives Matter we started in America, does it have any relevance here in Nigeria? Um, and isn't it an irony that we'll be talking about Black Lives Matter in Nigeria, in Africa, you know, where the president is black, the policemen are black, the rich are black, and the poor are black, well, mostly, you know? Um, but, but it's true. Again, to go back to the lack of equality in our society, some people's lives are seen as less important than other people's lives here in Nigeria. And the question I think we kind of spend time discussing is how do we, how do we challenge that? How do we amend that, you know? And we decided maybe people have to be more educated. Education is the biggest equalizer, you know, is the biggest preparation for, for life, for everything. Um, so I think that's really where we kind of left it at. And the other panel discussion that I took part in was yesterday about my book, um, The Chibok Girls, with Teju Ko talking about his book, Known and Strange Things. So we kind of talked about different ideas, um, why I wrote the book, you know, um, about state of religion in Nigeria and violence and how these things kind of seem to emerge. And of course, Tejiko talked about his own book, his essays uh, about different subject matters. Good audience, we had a good audience, packed full, good questions. Um, so very fulfilling um, panel event for me. Well, well, this is my new book, The Chibok Girls. This is actually the American cover. The Nigerian cover is a bit different, um, but this is, a, this is a book I'm, I've been talking about since I came. And beyond literature, um, I think what I enjoyed the most at Ake is meeting African intellectuals here in Africa, in Nigeria. Um, I mean, we've all been invited to festivals in Europe and America, but I think it's not the same thing as when you meet writers here on our own soil to discuss matters, you know, with nuance. You know, you don't have to generalize now. We know exactly what we're talking about. Um, but it's just good to hang out with black intellectuals and friends and just to have that collegial moment together. So that's really the fun part of it for me. Mm -hmm.